I'd like to do another example setting up a Riemann sum. For this one, we're going to do the definite integral from 1 to 4 of x squared minus 4x plus 2 dx. So first and foremost, if we were to graph this, we would get a parabola that opens upward with a vertex located at the ordered pair 2, negative 2. So it'll open upward like so. Y-intercept will be up at positive 2 as well. And a symmetric point over here at 4, 2. So the area in question is going to be the following area. We're going from x equals 1 to x equals 4. The area in question will be this rather large negative region followed by this little positive region. Now just based off of the shapes that I see here, I'm predicting that we're probably going to wind up with a negative answer since it appears as though there's a lot more negative area than there is positive area. So setting this up using our six step process, first we'll calculate delta x. Delta x is b minus a over n. b and a come from the bounds. That'll be 4 minus 1 over n, or simply 3 over n. For our sample point for each interval, the formula is a plus i times delta x. a is your starting point for the interval. That's 1 plus i times delta x. So that'll be 1 plus 3i over n. We're going to plug this into the given function. The given function in this case is x squared minus 4x plus 2. x squared minus 4x plus 2. But the expression that I'm plugging in is the expression that we got from our previous step, which is 1 plus 3i over n and 1 plus 3i over n. Expanding and simplifying wherever possible, expanding the first gives us 1 plus 6i over n plus 9i squared over n squared. Applying the distributive property, this will be minus 4, minus 12i over n, and we'll see a plus 2 down at the end. Combining my like terms, I'm going to list my i squared terms first. So 9i squared over n squared. We have plus 6in minus 12in. That'll be minus 6i over n. 1 minus 4 plus 2 will be minus 1. I am going to multiply this quantity by delta x. That'll give me f of x sub i star times delta x. So expression we just got times delta x. Distributing the 3 over n to all three of these terms, this will be 27i squared over n cubed minus 18i over n squared minus 3 over n. Next up, we will be summing these. So this will be the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i star times delta x. So apply the summation to each of these. This is where we're going to be using some properties of the summations that were listed in our first video of the playlist. First off, anywhere that I see an addition or a subtraction, I can split into multiple summations. So this would be the sum from i equals 1 to n of 27i squared over n cubed minus the summation from i equals 1 to n of 18i over n squared minus the summation from i equals 1 to n of 3 over n. Wherever these have constant multiples, the constant multiple can be pulled outside of the summation. In the first summation, anything that is not in i is perceived as a constant multiple. 
so I can pull out the 27 over n cubed, leaving my summation as simply i squared. From the second summation, 18 over n squared can be pulled out, leaving me with just i. And for the last summation, 3 over n counts as a constant, and if I were to factor that out, that would leave me with the summation of 1. All three of these have formulas from our first video of the playlist. I'm going to try to make this transition as seamless as possible to the next piece of paper. So this would be equal to 27 over n cubed times the summation of i squared from i equals 1 to n, the shortcut is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. The summation for i is n times n plus 1 all over 2. And the summation for any constant is that constant times n. Hopefully it's fairly obvious to everybody that there is a lot of algebraic simplification that can take place here. I'm going to do some of that simplification. So first off, we can cancel an n with an n, and the 27 over 6 will reduce down to 9 over 2. We can reduce the n to a square, so we'll call this 9 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 2n squared. On the next one, we can cancel the 2 with the 18, leaving us with a 9, and cancel an n with an n, leaving us with minus 9 times n plus 1 all over n. And finally, n and n cancel out to leave me with 3. In anticipation of the limit that we're about to take, I am going to take the 9 halves out, expand the numerator completely and at my next step I'm going to distribute the n squared to all three of these terms. Similarly I'm going to do that here with the n plus 1 over n I'm going to distribute the n to each of these terms n over n plus 1 over n and finally do the same for the first set of parentheses 2n squared over n squared is 2 3n over n squared is 3 over n, and 1 over n squared is simply 1 over n squared. This can be done as an alternative to L'Hopital's rule if you'd like to save yourself a little bit of calculus and just go straight to algebra. So now we'll take the limit as n goes to infinity of the expression that we just got. Oops, scratch that. Limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i star times delta x. That's going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the expression that we just got. So 9 halves 2 plus 3 over n plus 1 over n squared minus 9 times 1 plus 1 over n minus 3. That way, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, and we are left with 9 halves times 2, minus 9, minus 3, for a final answer of negative 3. Now, as a reminder, and it seems like forever ago, but really it was just like, you know, 9 minutes ago, this was the area that we were trying to find. I pointed out that there's a lot more negative region than there is positive region, and as a result... We wound up with an overall area that was negative. Excuse me, overall signed area that was negative.